We all know you're supposed to keep your fingers straight on the chanter and not bent. But I'm going to give you three other positioning tips in this video to help ease the difficulty of getting your hands and fingers used to the practice chanter of the bagpipes. And if you didn't know, your fingers are supposed to stay straight. Hey, you've already learned something. We haven't even got to the three tips yet. All the information on my beginner bagpipe workshop is in the link below the video. But again, I'm going to give you the three tips. As I mentioned, our fingers aren't curled up like they are on a penny whistle or a recorder or even a flute. Our fingers are straight. But the tip that a lot of people miss, this first tip, is our fingers are straight, but also our hands are closer towards the chanter. So not only are my fingers straight, but I see a lot of people, they, they're trying to keep their fingers straight, but they still have trouble reaching that bottom hole because they're not moving their hand towards that chanter. So if my chanter is here, my hand actually has to move into that chanter. My knuckles are coming closer to that chanter. If you don't do that, you're trying to keep your fingers straight, but your, your hand is still far from the chanter. What happens is these middle knuckles in your fingers are, are going up almost like a swan neck. And we have, because you're trying to keep your fingers straight, but you're not moving your fingers towards the chanter or your hand towards the chanter. And we end up getting these, these bent up knuckles here. So your, your, your pads of your fingers are straight and flat on the chanter, you're not on your tips, but all your middle knuckles are bent up and then you're still having trouble reaching that bottom hole. So when you flatten your fingers out and then slide towards the chanter, then that's going to allow you to spread out your fingers more and you, you cover more, more area and it's going to be easier to reach that bottom hole on the chanter. So that's tip number one. We know you don't want to be curled. We know you want to be straight, but you need to slide into the chanter a little bit more. So actually the hole is not on the pad of your finger. The hole is not on the pad. The hole is further down. Uh, not on every finger, but on, on uh, certainly the bottom, certainly the bottom hand, the holes are below that first joint. So you have that first joint. We don't want the hole above, we want the hole below for the three fingers of the bottom hand. But our pinky, our pinky is going to be above that first joint. Because it has to reach all the way to the bottom. <laughs> so it's going to be above that first joint. But for the, the other three fingers on the bottom hand, the hole should be below that first joint. And you're only going to achieve that not by having your fingers straight and the knuckles bent up, in the middle of your finger, you're only going to achieve that by sliding, keeping the whole finger straight and sliding towards that chanter. So that's tip number one. That's going to help you get that bottom finger on the hole for your low G's, for your burls, for, for all that, all that stuff. So that's tip number one. What's tip number two? This, this tip is a, it's an easy one. It might seem like a no brainer, but it, it might just, you know, save you a lot of sweat and heartache. So tip number two is support your chanter with something. The chanter is a free, loose thing, especially when one hand is off, the other hand has to hold it and vice versa, and, and it can feel like it has a, a jumping, uh, bouncing, <laughs> prancing life of its own. Support the end of the chanter. Place it on a table. Have your knee bent up. Place it on your knee. Stabilize that chanter. Give yourself a little bit of stability. Give your fingers a bit of a break. Have that chanter stable when you play. Instead of having it loosey-goosey when, when your hands aren't even able to control themselves, let alone the chanter yet. So stabilize the end of the chanter. Place it on the table. Place it on your knee. Have it on a steady surface and at least give yourself a fighting chance. If you're worried, Alec, me stabilizing the chanter like this, is, is this going to you know, cause more problems? Shouldn't I make my hands work for it? No, because when you get to the bagpipes, the chanter is hooked into the bagpipe. You're, you're not having to stabilize that chanter because it's stabilized at, at the top and gravity's, you know, hanging. It's, it's, it's just so much, it's, it's just a more stable setup than this loosey-goosey thing that you're just getting started on. So stabilize the end of the chanter, have it on your, 
your music book, your binder, your knee, your, your table, anything like that. So that's tip number two. So tip number three, if I remember what tip number three is, I'm just going to talk a little bit about elbow and forearm positioning here. So when, when we're thinking really hard, when we're trying really hard, we tense up. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a protective response. Um, if you're thinking hard, you might clench your jaw, you might tighten your neck muscles, you might bring your elbows in, you're, you're kind of bracing for impact. Um, and that's good if someone's going to come out and sideline you and, 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 you know, maybe hit you off the cliffside, you need to brace. Um, when you're playing the chanter, you don't need to brace, you need to relax. So those elbows, if they're being tucked in, you think if I tuck my elbows in harder, I'll play better. No, because then all the motion has to come from your fingers. Your elbows need to be relaxed out at about a, a 30 degree angle down from the horizontal or a 45 degree angle down from the horizontal. About, right? So this is flat. We don't want that. This is right up and down. We don't want that. We're kind of halfway in between, about 30, 40 degrees, kind of floating halfway in between there. That's where we want the elbows. And part of the reason why we want the elbows there is because then your forearm can uh, help a lot with some of those chanter movements. So especially from low A to D, as an example, that motion, I do a lot of that, like I'm grabbing a doorknob and turning that doorknob. A lot of that motion is coming just from the wrist. And that makes it a lot less effortful than if I try to achieve that motion strictly from the fingers. So just strictly from the fingers, I feel everything has to tense up. When I allow that rotation, as if I was grabbing a doorknob or turning a key, I allow that rotation to happen, which can only happen if your elbow is out at about that 30, 40 degree angle. Your forearm can't really help you out here. If you're too up here, it can't really help you out either. So that, that elbow position is important to allow your forearms to work. And for that high A, it's kind of less of a rotation and more of a... It's more of like I'm kind of almost like swatting down with my whole hand. So there is a little bit of this wrist kind of flick movement. It's more of this up and down movement with the top hand. But the bottom hand is certainly is certainly that more of this rotation going on. So something to keep in mind when you're working through the scale. I, I, I did, gave you in my other free video of my beginner workshop, the links below. My other free video talks about three things you need to work on before working on the scale. Well, now here's some positioning hints, three tips for your positioning. Make life easier as you get started on the practice chanter. Just a quick overview. We have stabilized the chanter. We have elbow position out at about 30, 40 degree angle. We have the rotation as part of that elbow wrist uh, tip. And then we have, yes, fingers are straight, but we need to slide towards that chanter to get the holes below that joint and get that pinky on the bottom hole. So those are your three tips. Again, check out that link below if you'd like to take a look at my beginner's bagpipe workshop and hope to see you in another video soon. Until next time, keep on piping on.